All right, guys, today we're going to talk about tuning up your bandsaw so that your blades last longer, your cuts are straighter, and you don't have any of that fish tailing and wedging happening. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my bandsaw out. Now, luckily, I have it on this rolling base, so it's pretty easy for me to roll out. If you don't have it on a rolling base, you may have to slide it out. Just be careful that you don't tip the thing over and don't pull or lift from the table because that's going to throw off the entire saw if this moves. First, we're going to make sure that it's pulled out, and then I'm going to go unplug it. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up all of my guides. We're gonna release the tension. Shoot. I'm gonna take the light off. And I'm gonna release the tension on the blade. Now, a lot of manuals will tell you to have the blade centered on the wheel, but in this method, you actually have the gullet centered on the wheel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a little tension to the blade. And I'm just gonna spin the blade with my hand. And I'm looking through my viewfinder here. And you're gonna just adjust that blade until it sits dead center on the wheel on those gullets. And once you have the blade on and everything's aligned, in the center, you don't have to worry about the bottom wheel. The top wheel is the one we're worried about. Once you have that center on the blade, you can go ahead and lock that back in place with your side lock. What this is going to do is it's going to allow the blade to ride in the middle of the cut instead of being curved one way or the other. Otherwise, you're gonna start causing some fish tailing and some wedging against the fence. And you want that cut obviously to be straight and the idea being that it's in the center of the wheel, therefore the cut's straighter. All right, we wanna make sure that our blade is tensioned well enough. There's a couple of things that I like to do. First of all, I like to check to make sure that there's about a quarter inch of play from this part of the blade, not from down here. And that'll let us know that, you know, we're pretty close to good tension. Your main goal here is to tension the blade so there's about a quarter inch of deflection in between this long stretch between the two wheels. And don't worry too much about the tensioning guides. Um, I honestly don't use them and don't trust them very much. Once we get that all set up, we can go ahead and set the guide. This is the most important part of the process, so make sure that you're taking your time to get it right. A lot of these guides are different from bandsaw to bandsaw, but you know we can get close enough on each of the bandsaw types so that you can adapt this to your bandsaw. Basically, what we want to do is we want to get two side guides to run along either side of the blade right behind the gullet, and then we want to get our rear guide right behind the blade so that when the blade is actually spinning, there's no contact with any of the guides at all. So let's go ahead and get those set up. So what you want to do is just touch them to the wheel and then back them off ever so slightly. Once you got that locked in, pull it off a little bit. So now the upper guides are all set up, we're going to want to do the same exact thing to the bottom guides, making sure that the side guides are right behind the gullet and that the rear guide is right behind the back of the blade. All right, so next we're going to check that the table is 90 degrees to the saw blade. And to do that, I'm going to use a square. And I'm just going to put it flat on the table and align it with the blade. And it looks like we're actually dead on. So if it wasn't dead on, we would want to adjust the table pitch on the side of the saw and just get that perfectly level. This way, everything else can line up correctly. All right, so next we're gonna check the fence. And we obviously wanna make sure that our fence is 90 degrees to our table as well. So you wanna check the back of the fence and the front of the fence, just to make sure everything's looking at 90. And mine is. Now, again, if your fence wasn't at 90, there's some adjustments on the back of your fence that'll allow you to adjust the angle inward or outward. And so we wanna make sure that that fence is just perfectly 90 to the tabletop. So the last thing we want to check is we want to make sure that the fence is running parallel to the miter slot and that the miter slot fence and blade are all aligned with each other. So to do that, I'm going to grab a trap stick and drop it in the miter slot. I'm going to set the square arbitrarily. It'll say seven inches and I'm going to set it up against my strip here. I'm going to check that it's touching at the back of the fence. I'm going to transfer that over to the front of the fence and see that that's aligned as well. And we're good. The fence and the miter slot are running parallel to one another. So we're doing those long resaws or we're cutting veneers or anything that they're going to run straight and parallel to one another, which is what we want. Now that we have the fence and the miter slot running parallel, we want to check that the blade is running parallel to the fence. And that's our last check. And what we're going to use is just a nice straight edge for that. And I'm going to lay it down against my blade. Now I'm using a three quarter inch blade here, so I've got a lot of real estate to work with. If you have a thinner blade, this may be a little bit more tricky, but the idea being that you wanna run the straight edge along the blade so that it creates a nice parallel line. And then you wanna, from there, going to take the fence and just creep it up to your straight edge to make sure 
that when those are locked in place, remember to lock your fence in place when you're doing this test, that they run parallel to one another. If they do, then you're, you're good to go. If that wasn't the case, there's a couple of bolts underneath the table that you would need to adjust. Now only to take off three of those bolts and use like a dead blow hammer to lightly tap the table back into square. Now that's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. Thankfully, I've already set mine up. I'm not gonna take it out of square for this demonstration. I've seen a couple of videos where other people are aligning the fence to the blade. The problem with doing that is that your miter slot then becomes irrelevant because if you're trying to cut off the miter slot, the miter slot's not square to the blade. So. Make sure that you take the time to set everything up and get your blade running in line with your table and in line with your fence so that everything's working together. We're just gonna verify that all of our setup is correct now. And we're gonna do that with a piece of two by six that I've cut and jointed one edge of so that we're nice and flat on the tabletop. And we're gonna cut about halfway into the board and we're gonna rotate it and put it on the back of the blade and see if it lines up. What that's gonna do is test whether or not this blade is running parallel to the table. So let's give that a test. Now, if we've done a good job, this will line up perfectly with our cut. And it does. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is just take a nice little edge off of our board here and make sure that everything is cutting and lining up correctly. All right, and that's a nice consistent cut all the way across that board. We can cut real thin veneers with that setup. And you know, I'm, I'm really happy with that cut. So we're looking good. All right guys, so that about wraps it up. So now our bandsaw will cut straighter, our blades will last longer, and it will be a happier woodworker. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Watch the next video in this series right here, and I'll see you next time.